What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to professionally profile Python applications to optimize them for speed. So let us get right into it. Alright, so let's say you have a Python application that consists of multiple different functions and methods that has many, many lines of code and you want to speed it up because it seems to be kind of slow, you want to optimize it for speed, but you don't know exactly which parts of the application are slowing it down the most. This is what we're going to discuss in this video today and we're going to look at a professional solution to this problem, but we're going to first start out with a more simplistic approach so that we can see why the second solution, the professional solution is superior and better. And for this video today, I'm going to use some very basic examples and some very basic functions. We're not going to do anything that's realistic so that we can focus on the foundational understanding here, on the fundamentals. Um, let's say we have some basic functions, def at, and I'm going to say we have the parameters x and y, and I'm going to say that the resulting sum is zero, and then I'm going to say the resulting sum is going to be plus equals x, and I'm going to say it's plus equals y as well, and then I'm going to return the resulting sum. Now, that is obviously not how you would write uh, an add function. Usually you would say return x plus y, but let's say we want to do it like that. We're going to do it more complicated. Then we're going to maybe say something like a factorial function. Um, and then we're going to say here we have the result is 1 for i in range 1 up until n plus 1. We want to um, say result times equals i, and then we want to return the result. And then we also maybe want to uh, do something like def do stuff, and we do something here, let's say we want to have a result list. And what we want to do is we want to iterate for x in range, and I'm going to go with one, I just prepared the number here. Let me check how many zeros I had here. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven zeros. So four we already have. So one, two, three. Um, we're going to just say results dot or result dot append x squared. And then we're going to return the result. And then maybe you want to have another last function, which is going to be waste time. And all it's going to do is it's going to sleep. So time dot sleep five seconds, and we're going to print hello. And of course, for this, we need to import time, which is done automatically by PyCharm. Um, but this is how those are the four functions that we're going to try to use now in our application. And we can do something like, if the name is main, let's just run all these functions in a row. Let's say we want to do um, the add function first. So we want to print at 100 and 5000. Then we want to do something like factorial of 70,000. Then we want to print do stuff. And then we want to call waste time. That's it. Now, what we can do, of course, here is we can just run this and see how long it takes. So we can just use our intuition to see, okay, which function is taking the most. And in this case, it might be quite simple, because we call the add function, we call the fact function, we call the do stuff function, we call the waste time function, and we're done. So we're calling them sequentially, we're calling those four functions sequentially, but in an actual application, you will have nested functions. So one function is going to call the other function, which is then going to call the other function two times and stuff like that. So you have a, a very complex systems when a uh, system when you have like a 1000 lines of code, for example, uh, or even less than that. So it might not be that obvious. So what you could try to do is you could try to just say, okay, start is going to be equal to time dot time, or actually, I think there's a function perf counter and stuff like that, you can just set a start and end point, and you can subtract uh, the start from the end. And then you can count the seconds of the function calls. You can, of course, do that. But that's kind of um, tedious to do that every time. So there's actually a better solution provided by core Python, which is to use the C profile package. So what you do is you create this Python file, you open up your command line, you navigate to the directory that we're currently working in. So um, this is actually the wrong one, they're all nine current, actually Python current. And here, instead of just running the script, what we do is we say, Python dash MC profile 
and then main.py. And this will run the script and in the end it will give us a summary table of the run times. It will tell us, okay, this took so and so long. Uh, so this takes quite some time now to process everything. Actually, it doesn't take too long in PyCharm. Why does it take so much in? Why does it take so long in the command line? Uh, let's maybe just call it on less than that. And not in PyCharm. Let's do it in a command line again. So neural gear and then Python and then current and then Python dash M C profile main py. Um, the basic idea is you run this and you get then a summary table of the run times of the individual function calls. So you can see here that I get this overview where I have um, the accumulated time. So the total time and also also the per call time, which in this case, it's going to be uh, roughly the same, not for print, because we call print multiple times. Uh, but we call, for example, do stuff only once. So this is how long it takes for do stuff in total. This is what it takes per call. If I call the function twice, so if I call do stuff twice, it's going to divide by two and give me the uh, per time. So we have this overview um, of the individual run times here. And this can be even done more beautifully uh, using C profile in Python. So instead of using the command line to do this, we're going to do it inside of Python. Um, and we're going to import here C profile. And we're also going to import P stats. And both these packages are core Python packages. So you don't need to install anything. And all we need to do now is we need to say here in our main section with C profile dot profile as profile. We're going to run all of this here. Um, and this is going to be then tracked in the profile. So this is going to create a profile object, and it's going to store it here. And we can then after this section, use it again. Um, and we can print the results. Now, before we just print the results raw, we can also sort them using the pstats um, module. So we can say here results are equal to pstats. And then we create a stats object based on the profile that we just tracked. So based on the profile that we create here by running these functions, we can get a results object. And then we're going to say results dot sort, we want to sort the stats, and we want to sort um, using p stats dot, what was the keyword dot sort key dot time, we want to sort by time. And then we want to print the stats. So results dot print stats. And this should actually now if I go back and add the two zeros in PyCharm, this shouldn't be too messy. Let's see. Maybe it still is. No, it's faster. And then we need to wait five more seconds because of this function. And there you go. You can see here that it's sorted by time. Now the function that takes the most time is the sleep function. So we have five seconds here uh, per call and also in total. Here we can see the print function also takes quite some time, but the print function, yeah, basically it takes time because the functions that are being printed take a lot of time. So if we just, if we were to always say R1 equals the result of calling this function, then the print function only prints that. We can see the difference actually here. So if I, or actually maybe, I'm not sure if it's going to change, but we can try. So I can just do this like that, factorial 70,000, and then instead of calling the function inside of print, I can just print the result. So here I can say r3 equals do stuff. Let's see if the time that the print function needs changes. But this is the basic idea instead of running instead of creating timestamps with end minus start every time before a function after a function, we can just use C profile, and it's automatically tracking the runtime. No, okay, the print function actually takes so long because we have a lot of output. So it's not because we're calling the functions inside of print. It's because the output is so is so big, and it takes a lot of time to print. Um, but you can see here the do stuff function takes some time, the factorial function takes some time. But there's actually even a better way to visualize all of this because now we have this table, but maybe you want to see it in a graphical way. And if you want to do that, uh, what you have to do is you have to install an external Python package called tuna. So you can open up your command line, and you can say pip install tuna and this allows you this tool allows you to visualize profiles. 
So all we need to do for that is instead of printing it or in addition to printing it, we can say results dot dump stats and we're going to dump it into a file results dot prof for profile. And basically we have to run it now one more time and then we can navigate to the directory. So neural dear Python current. And now what I do is I call the tuna keyword. So I call the tuna tool on the results profile. And when I run this, this will open up a browser, my default browser, and it will navigate to localhost 8000. And here you can see now uh, how this is structured. And I hope my camera is not blocking it. So maybe let me put it to the left here. And you can see now that we have essentially the same results as we have here in the table but they're presented visually. So we see here, this is the root, the full script took nine seconds to run. And then you can see exactly why it took so long. So you can see, okay, the waste time function took the longest, the waste time function calls the sleep function, um, which takes um, 5.009 seconds. This is why this function takes so long. If we go to this function here, the do stuff function, it has um, the append function of the list that we can see here as well. We can also reset the zoom. So in this case, we don't have a complicated structure, but oftentimes you will have multiple function calls inside of functions, you will have this nested graphs. And here you can see visually that this function, for example, takes way too much time. So I could just in this case, obviously, it's artificial, but I can delete this to optimize the speed. So I can just run this again. Um, it will create a new file. So I can stop this here, it will create a new profiling results file. And then I can run this again. And now when I run this again, we will see that the waste time function is no longer really a problem. It's not really contributing to the runtime. So we can see that now the biggest problem here is the do stuff function. So why could that be? Well, in this case, it is because we process a lot of values, but maybe we can still speed it up. And those of you who have watched my, um, I think it was the advanced Python tutorial series, or it was the Python tips and tricks tutorial series. Um, you know that list comprehensions are way faster than doing it like that. So I can do the same thing here with a list comprehension. And I can say, um, return x squared for x in range. And I'm just going to copy that number here. And I can run the script again. So the functionality is the same. It's not even artificially slowed down with a sleep statement or something. But I can see here now that when I run this, um, here it was 3.181 seconds. And if I now go ahead and run tuna again on the profiling results, we can see it's now 2.014 seconds. And we can also do this multiple times. So I can actually go ahead and now let's get rid of this R3. Let's say just print do stuff. But let's do it three times in a row. <clears throat> and let's do it again like we did it before. So the slower way, I can run this now. And then you will also see that we have a per call value. So a little bit more representative than just running it one time, we're going to run it three times. So it's going to give us three different, it's going to give us one total time for the function and then divided by three, this is going to be the per call. So you can see that the do stuff function is responsible for 9.3 seconds of runtime and per call that is 3.1 second uh, seconds per call. I can change that implementation now by again, commenting this part and then uncommenting this part. So now we're using the list comprehension, but we're still calling it three times. So let's run this again. And we're going to see that now the per call value is going to be lower just because the list comprehension is way more effective, uh, way faster than using this structure here with the loop and the list. So let's just wait for the results. And then we're going to see that this is way faster. There you go, you can see that the do stuff function now only a call uh, accounts for six seconds in total and two seconds round about two seconds per call. Um, and last but not least, what we can do is we can go and call tuna again on results.prof. And then we're going to get this in a visual way as well. So do stuff six seconds as you can see here. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.